way I ended up with Capitol Records, this cat Chris York uh, got a hold of us and, and uh, got a hold of me and came over to my house in Nashville. And I honestly just played him a couple couple of songs I wrote on my acoustic and he immediately was like, all right, we gotta, we got to fly you out to LA. We got to meet the team out there. And, and so we did, we flew out, met Michelle Jubilier and Steve Barnett and I could tell that they understood my vision and who I wanted to be as an artist. And and it was honestly a no brainer after after meeting with them and you know seeing that how many artists they've been with the the Beatles, the Beach Boys, Frank Sinatra, Nat King Cole. It was I was like, all right, this is this is home. One of my favorite studio moments that I have was actually uh, I got to fly my dad out to L.A. A couple months ago, and he sang all the background vocals on one of this one of these songs called "Stranger," which uh, which I actually wrote about the crazy car accident I got in. And um, yeah, he was just getting to work with my dad was that was a just full circle crazy moment. I've never never been in the studio with with him, so getting to getting to fly him out to L.A. see him work with my producer Sean Everett, who's just crazy and kooky and fun and it was such a it was so fun it was really surreal and, and on on his end he was just like a little watching like a little kid in a, in a candy store so that was definitely my favorite studio moment having my dad in the studio was insane and and what really made that happen was we were sitting in the studio the, the day before we thought about this idea with i was sitting with sean my ma my producer uh, my manager John and and uh, his assistant. And we were just talking about all all of the our, our our fathers and and the dreams that they had and and they're also musicians. And we we just sat there and and thought about how how proud our dads were. And and after that, after having that conversation, we knew it was inevitable. We had to I had to fly my dad out. I mean, he was so proud. He's always he's been a singer all his life, and he's recorded in in, in, in studios and stuff. But he's never they're, never they're never signed to a label. And and having me, you know, take his dream and and take it further, you know, I could tell that he's I could tell how proud he was. Um, yeah. So in my creative process, I usually you know I usually start off probably in a shower in a, in a, or in a bathroom or in somewhere walking down the street. And I, some kind of melody pops in my head, and I, I take my iPhone out and record it. That's like, that's usually the first melodies. For some reason, they come to me. That's the first thing that comes to me. I'll then I'll go into a room and and get my guitar, kind of flesh out a chord progression that go, goes along with that melody. And the last the last thing that comes are the lyrics for me. And. Uh, Usually the chorus is like the last thing. I'm never, I feel like there's guys out there that chorus is just like pop in their head. I feel like I always have to kind of chisel, chisel a piece of granite out to get that. But yeah, that's, that's usually that's kind of how I, my brain works. One thing my fans don't know about me, I was a big fan of Dragon Ball Z back in the day when I was a kid. Um, I've, yeah, I've worked in restaurants all my life. If I could talk to the young me, I would say stick to plan A, move to a musical city when you're 18, just go. Go to New York, go to LA, go to Nashville. Don't worry about college, just, just do it. Just play music. And don't worry about plan B. You know, you don't have to go get that psychology degree. It's, it's good, but whatever, just play music.